What's up guys, welcome back to AC Designs Garage and in this series on learning how to MIG weld in one day we're going to be doing the square tubing one by one thin wall. We're going to show you tons of tricks so let's get at it. Alright guys, let's go over real quick what material we're working with. This is a 1 16th inch one by one mild steel square tubing. It's just some uh, scrap matter. fact you can see some rust and stuff down here. Just some old scrap we have. We're going to cut uh, several joints here. I'm going to do like a T joint and then we're going to cut a, a miter joint so we can do that show you a couple different ways and uh where problem areas are and uh how to fix them so we're going to get this mug chopped up real quick as for some of those stuff i use every week and stuff and also here's the seven steps it's a good thing we've been going by on this series of videos for you guys to do and uh, if you want to screenshot this but this is the way we uh try to tackle ever you know every job that we do on here is your prep tack angle gun motion push or drag whichever you want to get comfortable and arc and spark so you stick to these you'll be doing good uh keep some of this nozzle gel you just dip your uh mig nozzle down in it keeps the spatter off get you a good uh auto darkening shield it's what i prefer if you have a fixed shade it's just fine too it's just what i prefer because i do a lot of body work sheet metal work do a lot of spot welding and it's just a lot easier uh get yourself the mig pliers and also the machine we're using is the same one i've been using for about six eight months or something it's the arc captain mig 200 been a great machine so far i love it works good uh got you a discount code in the description below if you want to scoop one of these up like i said this machine will do a lot it'll do uh tig weld and stick weld mig weld and it does it all and this thing is very affordable right now so go check you one out i got the links like i said down below save y'all some money help the channel out too yeah i like this machine we got it on a 7525 argon carbon dioxide mix at about 22 cfh all that's ready and we're running a 030 wire er70s-6 Like I said, I'm gonna link all this stuff in my Amazon affiliate link in the description box below where y'all can scoop all this stuff at one place. Don't cost you guys any extra. I make just a small percentage off of qualified purchases, but it just basically gives y'all a place to go to one place and find everything I'm using. But today we're gonna be using the air grinder that Ingersoll ran that I use every week with the roll locks on it, the 60 grit roll lock. Or you could use these here, these uh, Dewalt's. We use these a lot with the four and a half inch. They work really great. You get a little heavy on the small stuff, so I'm just going to use this. But if this is all you got, that'll work great for you. Also, a good pair of gloves and a welding cap and stuff like that. Nice to have. And these uh, Wrangler long sleeve shirts. I'm not sponsored or anything, but these things work really good. Keep the sparks off of you as long as you're not doing really heavy cut, not settling cut or something. But we're going to get our little uh, practice tube set up. We're going to do us a... Uh, little miter joint we're gonna get that where it fits a lot better this is gonna be our sacrificial piece here before we set our welder up and get our setting right probably gonna be around i'm gonna say 17 volts and probably we'll start 17 and 5.5 we'll try 5.5 on the wire speed which is i think around 200 200 and some inches per minute all right guys we're gonna start out on the welder at 17 volts i like to write them on the table so i can keep up with it 17 volts i went through and done just a little conversion because these uh, offshore machines here in meters per minute i'm used to doing volts and inches per minute so 5.5 meters per minute is 216 inches per minute i guess i better put that in there inches per minute and then the 5.0 if the 5.5 is too much that'll be uh, 196 and if i go any lower that we'll change it around i just have to do the conversion for you clean these up real quick and that's step one on doing this stuff here is the prep and you want this stuff to fit tight we got plenty of uh 
voltage here on this machine to penetrate so you don't have to worry about leaving gaps and stuff because that's where you'll run into problems if you decide to put a gap in here it's just going to cause it to fall off so we're going to clean these things up to fit as tight as possible and uh get at it and then i'll show you some little tips on where your problem areas are going to be where the easiest part there's like two or three different uh joint configurations here and some of them's easier than others so i'm gonna get to it and i'm gonna Get to grinding. If you can see right here, I'm not putting a big chamfer or anything on it. I'm just kind of rolling the edge over just a little bit. But we don't want to get too thin on it. Because right here, if you can see, when you start cutting these miters, it starts getting this area from here up is like, super thin so that's usually your problem child here is going to be on your outside corner with a miter like this so we're gonna get the ovens cleaned up and get her to step two tack it together all right i guess a little quick check fit here there's how you want it guys you want let's try to take a little off this too we'll do that you want this thing to fit as tight as possible like i said this outside here will be the one that's going to be fun so it looks like we got pretty decent fit up around let's just see how she fits on on here make sure we didn't disturb any of the cut here everything looks good and Fit, so we're ready to figure out what kind of shape we're going to do here and get her tacked together. Let's get our old machine set up here. One thing I like about this Art Captain here, it's got this synergic mode, like you're just starting out, and uh, it helps pair your wire feed with your voltage. But we're going to go into the manual where we can tune it in. That's another neat thing about you. you just hit the synergic button. And you come over here to your, your voltage right here, and we're going to go up to 17. I think that's what we... Oh, it might be a little warm, but we'll see. You can go to your amperage, which is your wire feed speed. It's going to go, what, 5.5? There we go. Machine's on. It's a pretty cool thing about this machine right here. Is it's got the on-demand fan. It only runs when it needs to. I like to always, always clip the end off. And a uh, good thing about this, if you haven't saw my other videos, if you look at these MIG pliers, i got a hole on this side, and then it's got the cutter on this side. You just take that thing and put it up against like that and cut it. That gives you about three-eighths of an inch. It gives you your pretty close to proper stick out here. And uh, see how clean the inside is and stuff? That's from using that dip. I'm going to go over here and go ahead and dip it real quick. Just put a new fresh coat on it. Just take it, stick it down in there. It just puts a little film on it. And... Uh, Keeps her clean. So we got everything ground and clean. We're gonna come in here and I'm gonna run a couple. If you need to practice, you can. You can run a, just put you a couple lines on here. I'll do it over here. I don't wanna put too many, too much heat in this little section here and start getting weird. So we'll go over here on this side and we'll do our run here. And if we need to adjust, we'll run here. We can add some more juice to her. I don't think she's quite hot enough. You can see our heat input. It's not bad. It's not burning through or anything. We may put just a little more voltage. I may go up to, let's go 17.5. We'll do this other one on this side. All right, guys, you can see the heat input here, how much bigger the heat input is on that. Now, this may be something that we're going to have to do over on this edge. We might have to cut the voltage down a little bit. We'll just try it. 
because over here is where you're going to have your problems if you don't have a little shelf for it to pick up on like this. Now you can design whatever you're building and it'll make it a little easier on you and a little stronger if you can push it over like that. But we're going to show you how to do both. We're going to put it right on the edge for this and just in case you can't put it over there and then we're going to leave a shelf over here on this one. Yeah, that looks a little warm. So I think I'm going to go, let's see. We'll just do 17.3 and 5.5. Uh, I think that'll be good there. We'll get started. So like I said, this is the practice one. We're going to rotate her over. And uh, I'll show you this one without the arc shot. That way we can put the arc shots on the other ones. On this edge, a lot of times you can get by with trigger welding it where you're pulling the trigger and just keep it hot because this edge here is not going to hold much of anything really. So we may trigger weld this over here and that way it'll uh, penetrate good but not fall out. Sorry about this guys, my camera cut off for some weird reason and I uh, didn't get to show you how I done this side here. But we done the old trigger weld on this and basically all you do, we went around and spotted all four corners. And we come here right halfway on this bead here and done a hot tack and then tack and tack and tack as long as you keep it hot. Now I will say just do this on this side here. It's going to fall off if you try to wash over it anyway. But if this was a structural piece, I wouldn't be doing that. But we wouldn't be building stuff out of 1 16th wall 1 by 1 being a structural piece. So I say that's pretty acceptable for over here with the heat range like it is because you can look in here at the heat affected zone. How it's got a good heat, heat in it. And also, if you look inside there, it got that piece good and hot. So we're getting penetrated on this one, but the rest of them we're just gonna we're just gonna weld straight. Maybe just a little tiny oscillation to it. But this is just a practice one to try. So I'll show you more in depth on the other piece. So we're gonna do the inside. We're gonna do a little loop de loop on it, and uh, on the fillet only. It's like welding three different joints here. So you gotta do three different things. Turned out to be a nice little little weld. Starting to get our this little machine dialed in pretty good here. Good heat affected zone. Didn't cook it too much. Now these side ones, they're just hard to make look good. You're gonna have to probably get the grinder out, but on this one here, we're gonna do it real world. We're gonna do it like it's going up, because it's easy to let down weld like that. So you're gonna have to point up just to have your mid gun point up towards the groove here as you weld across so it don't sag down and this may take a little practice because sometimes they'll droop on you but that's why you cut up scrap real world stuff here see how we can do we're just going to drag this one with very minimal oscillation just a little bit if you notice here i got my same drag angle but i've just taken it and pointed it up towards this and just let it kind of wash down on it like that so here we go too bad not the prettiest one in the world but it's not built up really really tall grinder will make that look pretty yeah these outside are hard to get these in here you can make them look really good i'm just going to slow down on this one in just same way same angle but just kind of slow down and see if it'll melt in a little better Is not too bad. Grinder will make that look better too. I guarantee you it won't break off of there. Now if you want to make them look good and doing stuff like this you can trigger weld most of it. It's not going to break off but. All right guys you got to watch when you're tacking this stuff up is you don't this area here where the inside corner joint is it takes a little more heat. You got to stay there a little longer because it's just thicker material right there and to burn both sides in and if you go tacking this first It'll want to start doing this number and opening up a gap. So what we're going to do here is we're going to tack 
both of these and then come in here and pack this just to where it'll keep that good tight gap right there. And then this will be the last one we weld and it'll help you that you've already got some heat in the, the material here. So we're gonna get that outside tacked up, outside corners tacked up real good. get this uh, put together nicely good and tacked up it didn't draw any so that's real good now we'll do our vertical this one here I'm gonna leave just a little bit of shelf on it and you can design your project like this and it'll make it a lot easier if you can also we're gonna put this one out to the very edge like this like you're gonna use in a lot of situations and uh, it's better now when you're practicing to kind of challenge yourself and, and put yourself in the, the harder situations. so when you come across it out in the field or working in your shop or anything, you can tackle it. So get good at the harder stuff, the easier stuff comes. But we're going to leave a shelf on this one, and we're going to not leave one on this one. So it'll be a different type welding configure here. But that's how we're going to do it. So we're going to get all this tacked up, and I'm going to start arcing and a sparking. to move around kind of like you're tightening lug nuts on a car so it just kind of evens everything out. All right guys we got her all tacked together and uh we're gonna get the weld. I'm gonna go through and show you how each method that we're gonna do is different because but welding this one here on is going to be a little different than welding this one just because of the area here. And I'll explain each one of them as we go. And uh, I'll probably do the bottom one first. We'll do this, uh, probably going to do the corner one first. Let's get that one done. I'll explain it. So we're probably going to do just a little slight oscillation on this one and on the bottom too. The edge here, we're probably going to do a downhill because it'll help melt in and it won't burn it away as fast but you probably have to go pretty quick so this one here and this one here is going to be your hardest ones probably because these are going to be the ones that's going to want to melt away but the rest of them you guys should scoop up pretty easy but just keep practice on them and don't get discouraged and you'll get it all right guys here we go <laughs> Here's that weld right there. Now these welds here are gonna hold and you're gonna be able to grind because we got them turned up a little bit, but they're never the prettiest welds. The prettiest ones you're gonna get is gonna be on in here. But we may try to cut just a little more heat to make this thing sink down in on this one. That'll be good. We'll have us a kind of a little vertical one. And uh, put a little more heat to this one, see if we can get her to sink on down. So let's go just for that joint only. We're going to go 17, 8. I'm going to put y'all back in the fancy art shot device here. All right, guys, we're going to drag uphill on this one. And I may just do just a little oscillate, not a whole lot, just to widen it out so it don't peak up real high. So we'll just do a little small oscillation. You should be able to see it in the weld. <laughs> there we go on that one. We got a 
little more heat into it. As you can tell by the heat affected zone out here. But more likely you're gonna be grinding most of these welds on this stuff here. Now I guess we need to just do us a downhill on this one. It would be easier to weld it up top like this because it's gonna naturally, gravity's gonna sink, but we're trying to make it a little more challenging. So we'll prop her up like this and uh, do a good downhill on her. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna go straight downhill with this. We're gonna start on this crack and take her downhill like that. And what we'll do on this one here is I'll finish it off. We'll grind it real quick and fix it up like you would probably do on your go-karts and stuff. But here we go, let's do a quick downhill on this one. All right, we're just gonna come up here and get it good hot and melt it in and just slowly come down, watch your puddle and just come straight down it and stop. And uh, check it out. happy with that one looks good except for that big old drip <laughs> yeah, we got a little icicle on that one but the weld sunk down really nice we'll cut this light off so you can see it better the weld laid in really nice we'll just trim that off with the grinder yeah it, it sunk in there good let's see i kind of like it heat setting better seven dice go back we had her 17 five is probably pretty good I should have changed it before I done that outside, but I forgot about it. So we'll get this cleaned up real quick on this part here. Now we do got to do the inside. Maybe we can make one good looking weld here. Let's see if we can do that. All right, guys, here we go. Fill it well. Now we're going to do a little loop de loop uh, stack and dime on this one. Curse of ease, what this one's going to be. All right, guys, there we go on that one. That turned out pretty good. I had a little much angle, but I was trying to get get around all this stuff to be able to weld, but getting y'all the good sights where you can see them good. But yeah, make sure when you go around these corners that you wrap the corner good. You come up like that to tie the corners in. And I like to start here and, and pull it back around there, so. Right, guys i'm gonna get the rest of these welded i'm gonna show you how i'm gonna attack this one right here real quick i'm gonna show you the little trigger weld on just this one this is the only one i'd use it on i'm gonna show you how i would attack this one with the trigger weld and just keep it hot and tack 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 right there and then we'll weld the other ones up all right guys we're gonna pull the trigger weld just off the one that's sitting here at the end and see how that one does just give you a couple different options pretty good it's uh i believe it's good and penetrated enough on this 16th inch then on the other one we'll just do the straight stringers on it so we're just gonna trigger this whole one here just see what it does the inside corner joint here we're still gonna do our little uh loop-de-loop -loop on it our cursive e Couldn't get my corner wrapped real good trying to get around this stuff, but turned out pretty good. I guess we'll keep on with the theme of the trigger weld around there. guys here we go some of these welds are a little crooked but it's because i was trying to go around stuff that's that's all trigger welded around there it stayed up good and tight and i think like for this thin 16th stuff it's fine but anywho's well uh we'll go over here we'll do this one here with the straight stringers the normal 
the way you probably need to work up to maybe you can use the uh, this is just the idea maybe you can use a little trigger weld on these here i mean you can see it got plenty of heat into it heat affected zoned really good so i'm gonna say it's burning in if we cut it and etched it it would probably be fine on the thinner stuff but we're going to do the straight stringers with just a little oscillation on these down here and uh we'll do the cursive ease here and here on that and straight stringer on the outside of that one and uh weld our hole up and call it a day so we're going to start on this one right here on this Now that wasn't a bad stringer there, guys. I mean, they still just don't, it's gonna be hard. I'm sure there's some guys out there that can get these look good. I just can't get it except for the inside corner joints. That's the only ones I can make look any good. But don't get discouraged if it don't look perfect because these are some of the harder ones, I think, for me anyways, to, to make aesthetically pleasing. But hey, they'll hold, that's what they're supposed to do. This other one, it's going to be a straight stringer. All right, guys, get it over here where you can see it. It's the last one we've done. That's the one we've done, the, the Curse of Ease. Let me just some light over here. Done the curse of E on this one. Or you can do the straight stringers. You don't have to do that. I mean, these stringer here are really strong welds. I just tend on these. I like to just do the little loop-de-loop -loop on here just to just to do it. It's strong, it ain't gonna break off. Yeah, guys, I could see even on this one, I can tell the difference on uh just today welding a little bit from welding from this to this to this my third one you start getting better it's just seat time so i'm gonna i'm gonna clean this one up here in the middle real quick and show you how to finish it out like i said we had to heat enough to just down in there and we'll look at it good and we'll clean this up here and we'll be done Alright guys, there she is all finished up. I normally don't, like on these inside corner joints and stuff, I don't really mess with grinding them. It's a pain. Now you can, you can get in there and grind it down, just make it like one solid piece of metal, but I think that turned out plenty good. Good and strong for what it is. Like I said, the more I've done it today, actually the better I got, because that was some of my first stuff. But after it, after that's ground down, it'll look good. But any who's and this was my last one here we'll get us a wire brush on it real quick now i will say once we move to the tig weld i'd like to do a, a series like this also with the tig weld if you guys would like to see that on learn to tig weld in a day i mean it's basically taking a bunch of little clips and helping you guys out Doesn't make it look a tick better it still don't look that good i just don't like doing them stringer welds on here but that one turned out good. All these are just as strong, but nah. But you can see down there the, the heat marks on the inside where you got good heat all the way around through it. So yeah, it's not gonna break off. And, and people's gonna say on the the one that I done on this end, the trigger weld one, oh, that's not, you're gonna have cold lap. But guys, it's, you gotta pay attention to what the application is. This is 16th wall, one by two tubing. I mean, I can stand on it and bend the tubing. So you don't have to worry as much about that. Now, if you was doing structural stuff, I'd probably wouldn't advise doing the trigger stuff. That's her, guys. Looks pretty good. Got a good 
neat joint here. You can make you a piece of art, whatever you want to do out of it. All right, guys, hope y'all enjoyed that little video on how to weld square tube. And I think this is something that y'all use a lot of. That's why I kind of tried to pick it. It's always been a little something tough for me to weld. I mean, these, well, I'll say tough. Tough to make look really good, and you get disappointed because they don't look perfect. The strength is more important than the perfect looking of it. You can, you know, the more you do it, the better and more consistent you'll get. But I just thought this would be something neat because you can build your welding cart. You can build a welding table out of this. You can build a whatever you want to build. I mean, we build tons of stuff out of this one by one square tubing. But if you got any questions, make sure you drop them below. If you got any ideas for a video you want to see, drop them below. I've made a few for guys already that wanted to see them. So make you one of these little V things, whatever it is. And remember, be kind to one another. Jesus loves you. So do we. God bless. We gone.